The figure here represents an object O placed in front of a converging lens. You are given a converging lens. State a full description of the image I. Image I. So if you do not know how to write the description, go through my video where I have explained very nicely on the topics of converging lenses, the application of converging lenses, how do you describe the image. There are three terms in which you describe the image. One of the things that you look for is if the image is upright or inverted. Upright means both the object and the image are, are on the same side of the principal axis. So this is your principal axis, the center line. Both the object and the image are on the same side. So the image is upright. Now, next thing, compare the size of the image with respect to the object. If the image is bigger than the object, we say that the image is magnified. Right? That's the second thing that you look for, magnified or diminished. If the image is smaller than the object, then you say diminished. The third thing that you look for is if the, if the image is real or virtual. In this case, if you see the ray of lights, the actual ray of lights are moving some other way. The solid lines are moving. That's the actual path of the ray of light. They are moving some other way. They are not converging at a point. It is the imaginary construction with the dotted lines. The dotted lines are intersecting at a point. So whenever you are working with imaginary lines, the dotted lines to get the image, you say that the image is virtual. So let me list down the three things that you need to look for. If the image is upright or inverted, Second thing that you should look for is magnified or diminished. Diminished means small or it is real or virtual. So here what you have found? It is upright out of upright and inverted it is upright it is magnified it is virtual all right let us look at the mark scheme as well simultaneously virtual upright magnified all right so let us get back to the question using the letters from the figure identify the focal length of the lens now what is the focus first thing that you need to find to find the focal length is the focus. Which point do you think would be the focus? So many points are given. Now focus is a point through which the ray passes if it was coming from, it was coming parallel to the principal axis. So this particular ray which is coming to the principal axis, parallel to the principal axis after emerging from the lens will pass through the focus. So S is your focus. So where is your focal length? Distance from the center of the lens, which is R to S is your focal length. All right, makes sense. Let us tally the answer. Yes, they also say RS is the focal length. Focal length is the distance of the focus from the center of the lens. So this distance is Rs. Now the, la now the third part of A, draw an eye suitably placed to view the image. To view an object, the eye must, the light must enter your eye. Draw an eye suitably placed to view the image. So where, if you place your eye, the ray of light enters your eyes somewhere here. So how do you draw eye scientifically in physics? Like this. Draw some eyelashes. That's your 
I. All right. So if you are placing your eye here, let me color the eyeball. So if you are placing your eye here somewhere, if your eye is here somewhere, if you see the ray of lights are entering your eyes. To see something, the light must be entering your eyes. So this is the best location that you need to put your head or your eye so that you can see the image. Let us come to the B part of the same question. The figure here shows an object O placed to the left of the converging lens. A principal focus for the lens is marked here. Now the question one says draw two rays to locate the image of the object and draw the image. Let us draw two rays. There are three construction rays. Let us use two of them. The two of them that we might use here would be a ray which comes parallel to the principal axis after refraction, after passing through the lens, passes through the focus. That's one ray. Another ray, a ray which passes through the center of the lens, passes as it is, without bending. Passes as it is. Now, where is the point of intersection? Where is the point of intersection? This blue dot is a point of intersection. Let us draw the image. Let us join this dot with the center principal axis. That's your image. Add the arrowhead. That's your image. That's your image. Why is the arrowhead coming at the point of intersection? Because the light was emerging from the arrowhead. Light, both the ray of light were emerging from the arrowhead. Therefore, the point of intersection is the location of the arrowhead. You do not place the arrowhead this way. It's wrong. Arrowhead has to come at the point of intersection. All right. Now let us come to the next question. On this diagram, draw one other ray from the upper tip of the object. Upper tip of the object to the image. We can draw one more ray. Let us use the third construction ray which says a ray, a ray which comes through the focus passes, passes parallel to the parallel to the principal axis on the other side. So we'll have to work other way around. A ray of light which is coming parallel, a ray of light which is coming parallel we are working the other way around because we are not given the focus on the other side. We are not given the focus on the other side. So we are working other way around. We are drawing a parallel line with the principal axis and we are making it reach the tip of the arrow. Why? Because the third construction ray says a ray of light which comes through the focus, it emerges parallel to the principal axis. The construction of the three rays are done. All that is left is to add arrows before and after the lens. Add the arrows. Your work is done. Your question is complete. Let me show you the mark scheme. Please make a note of the mark scheme as well. So that's how your mark scheme looks like. Now the next video will be on question number 3 and 